Have you ever painted using a limited range of colors, a limited palette? So in this demo video, I'm going to try and restrict myself to two colors only, cadmium orange and cobalt blue. Bit of a strange mixture, but I thought they might make an interesting combination. And in this, I want to try and see really what happens with these two colors, how they're going to mix with each other, what range of what range of different hues and, and other colors could I make from those from that combination? What range of values? How dark can I get uh, with with that combination? Could also get any interesting textures, some granulation that you you often get with certain colors or pigments with watercolor, that granulation, which I think is quite a, an attractive um, effect in some areas of a painting. For example, where you've got old stone, maybe, you want to try and emphasize that kind of texture and granulation can, can certainly help you. So hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, watercolor painter and tutor producing videos and online workshops to help you improve your paintings. If you want to keep my reference photo as I paint through the demo, then open this in, open the video in another tab or, or browse and you keep uh, going back to it. Or better still, um, excuse the plug, join my Patreon scheme, my Patreon club. Just go to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T, where I share high resolution images of all of my videos. The videos are also ad, ad free and posted early for my friends up on, up on that club. Okay, so let's make a start. Subject for the video is Plaza Mayor in central Madrid, probably the most iconic main square in Madrid enclosed. I think it's actually not strictly speaking a square, it might be more rectangular, uh, but within the this mid this vast open space, you've got lots of cafes, shops, um, people milling around. This photograph of mine was taken in, I think April or May time. So people are eating out, outdoors, outside, and we've got umbrellas here in the square. Lots of lights and darks to contend with. We've got the bright light of the sky, the, the umbrella here as well. Not sure if I'm going to keep to that flat shape. Might make it a little bit uh, more squat in, in dimensions. Down the left-hand side, I've got this, um, this one of these pillars, these large pillars, the, the colonnades around the around the square. Um, this is what the, the left-hand side there, lovely texture on that wall. And then underneath the, the parasol, we've got all these people um, and lots of different complicated shapes to deal with, tables, chairs, lots of legs, um, the, the texture of the, the ground as well, but lots, lots of figures um, all around the place, some catching the light, some in, in the shadows, nice silhouetted shapes as well. We're sort of almost looking into the sun here um, in in this uh, scene. So plus, Plaza Mayor, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. My Spanish is terrible. Uh, let's see how we get on. Paper I'm using is, as usual, Saunders Waterford Cold Press, 300 grams. It's 15 inches by 11. I go through the colours when I start painting but first step is to do the initial drawing and I'm starting with that on that left hand side framing the scene on the left hand side the edge of the column and some of the joints between the blocks and then the umbrella, the main umbrella under which the people are sitting in the cafe. This is the side panel of that umbrella, so quite a simple shape. Behind that, we've got the far side of the square, and then the right-hand side, trying to get that angle correct for the perspective. 
and then think about perspective the underneath the underneath of that umbrella central pole I'm using a 3B pencil, so it's going to be the the lines are going to be fairly dark. Hopefully, I'll be able to see those those lines through the the layers of of paint that I put on. So some figures, and where where I've got groups of figures, I'm treating them almost as one shape looking at I'm looking at my source photo as I'm doing this just for a little bit of inspiration I'm not copying that photograph exactly I'm trying to just adjust things to help with the composition I'm at, at the end of the day I'm trying to create a piece of art here and not not copying a hundred percent that photograph the photograph is just the the inspiration the guideline and certainly with people tables and chairs we can move them around to suit us to suit the the composition some more figures on the right hand side these tables and chairs are giving us a little bit of horizontal interest some of them will be catching a little bit of light as well on the far side of the square there's more restaurants and some umbrellas outside of those and then on the right hand side we've got a few more going up the right hand side we've got a few more umbrellas they're they're catching a little bit more light over on that side and on the extreme right there's just one another umbrella coming into the shot with the building on the right hand side there's hundreds of windows and I paint in a fairly loose way. I think if I started drawing in every single window there, the danger is that it's going to be quite, quite a sort of tight representation of the scene. I want to go fairly loose with this one. And on that, on that right hand side, I've just drawn in some guidelines really for just, just looking at the perspective and where, where the top or the bottom of, of those windows might be. Just strengthen up that line there. So with this, with this drawing, it's just the, it's just, a, I'm just creating the guidelines. The, the, the just, I'm just drawing in the main objects and having to make sure this is correct first before then going on to going on to paint the scene no point starting to paint if the drawing isn't quite right because for me that things go horribly wrong and it's just difficult to rectify it in the in the painting stage uh, it's you invariably it goes wrong for me so I think that's the drawing done let's start painting The paints I'm using are handmade paints from Jackman's Art Materials in the UK. Uh, more information in the notes of the video. And there's a code for getting some discount as well if you want to try them out. So two colours are cobalt blue and cadmium orange. You can see that cadmium orange right there towards the bottom of my palette. And I'm using a squirrel mop brush just to very lightly put in that sky, of course, with that, primarily with that cobalt blue, and covering the sky and then painting it around a little bit around the top of the umbrella. The Underneath part of the umbrella where it's catching a little bit of the shade, I've just put in a very light wash of that cadmium orange. And then gradually, so I'm gradually coming down the scene. Picking up 
paint around those parasols around the edge of the square the objective with this wash is to cover most of the scene apart from those areas where they're deliberately going to be kept bright white or I want to hand them in a, in a specific way I may be using a little bit of neutral tint. I'm not sure if that classifies as a color. Maybe this painting is two and a half colors. <laughs> maybe, maybe neutral tint is half a color. Bottom of the umbrellas come across to the right hand side of the square. So the actual, the inside of the square is going to be fairly light. I've gone in quite dark there initially, but I can, with this brush, it's got a lot of water on it, I can just weaken that mixture a bit to make it lighter. Actually move the paint around further. It's going to dry lighter as well. You've got to compensate you've got to think about the, the 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 way watercolor paint dries and it does dry it a little bit lighter so you you when you paint you've got to go in a bit darker so it's just applying this paint moving it around seeing how these two colors are interacting with each other perhaps go a little bit cooler on the right hand side i'm using a bit more of a, an erratic brush stroke here on on that bottom right corner when i was doing the sky it was a more controlled horizontal lines I just want that nice sort of smooth wash. But when I come down to the ground level where you're trying to you're trying to give the impression of the, the texture of the stonework and all the, the cobblestones and the pavement there, then it helps just by by painting with the brush in, in different directions. You're just going to get those subtle little variations in, in texture there. So that's the first wash stage done. Next step will be on to the darks, just trying to create a little bit more, more a great, greater range of values, depth in the painting and so on. So the paper has been allowed to dry, 100% dry, and then I can go on to this darker stage, smaller brush. I'm using a, a synthetic round brush now, uh, a number 12 size. Brush with a, a good point to it and starting on the, well I'll, I'll start on the right hand side. And I'm checking the point of my brush, checking how much paint it's got in there. I don't want too much, not too little. I'm still painting fairly large areas but with this good point to the brush and a good edge, I can define little bits of architectural details on the top of the roof, which I've kept fairly cool and dark, so mainly cobalt blue, now mixing in a bit more cadmium orange for the, the wall on that right-hand side. And in a loose way, painting around some of the windows. So I'm not going to be painting in every single window. I may, um, here I'm just defining the, the edges of the windows, the, 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 the space between the windows. I may cover up some of these because the 
the sun is coming in from the left hand side so it will be a little bit brighter towards that right hand side a bit darker in that far corner As I come down, I'm going to get a little bit cooler, so mix in more of the cobalt blue. There's actually one, two, so there's one, two, three, four, there's five levels to this building. So this is the second or, second or third level, depending on whether you're counting or at the top or the bottom. Uh, right, down to now the first floor. I use my fingertips a lot just to move paint along quickly, lifting something off or just gently moving things around the, the paper. Now down to, so this is the first floor, up to that right hand umbrella and continue on down to the ground floor top down to the umbrellas which I painted around on that first light wash but again now painting around some of these umbrellas and of course going going in, going in a bit darker now we're just defining the, those they're standing out a lot more now and getting the and getting the light of those umbrellas with the, the with the dark background. There's some very small balconies or balconets, or I'm not sure what you describe it, but um, not proper balconies, very narrow uh, balconies in front of the in front of those those windows on that level. Okay back of the square this sort of tower that is in it's in a sort of central position down that side so at the back that tower silhouetted against the sky don't need to be too detailed with it it's in the background just keep it nice and simple a structure to the left hand side of the tower and then down to the main umbrella try and give myself a nice crisp hard edge emphasize the emphasize the the light with the dark continue along the ridge at the back there now that ridge is not strictly speaking completely straight there are well there are, there are a few little architectural details sticking up from the ridge of the roof so i'm i'm not going with a with a completely straight line just introducing a few little dents and bumps along the way and then join up with the right hand side in that corner so this is predominantly cobalt blue here. And when I've joined up with that right hand side, I'll pick up more of the of the cadmium orange to continue down with this sort of more of a warmish feeling to that back wall but it needs to be a little bit darker than the right hand side because it's in the shade and also i'm not going to bother so much with lots of windows in that background i'll just keep it very simple Cool at the top, warm in the middle, come a little bit cooler down towards the bottom, down to street level. Right, underneath of the parasol and another crisp 
hard edge. Paint around a few figures on that left hand side, which at this stage, I'm not sure if those figures are going to be dark or I might keep them, some of them a little bit light against the darker background. Just continue over and then those far umbrellas paint around those fairly carefully. Up the right hand side of the umbrella. This is where it's important to get that initial drawing right. So pick up a bit of neutral tint to go darker. Neutral tint is like a sort of charcoaly grey that when you mix it with something else it immediately is going to make a darker version of that colour. I also quite like using it in conjunction with yellow to make a, a nice dark green for trees. So it's a very useful colour in my palette to get those instant darks. Bottom of the umbrellas, and over on that far side, there's lots of things going on. Tables and chairs, distant people, objects. Because it's so far away, I, I just want to keep it fairly simple there. And then continue up the right-hand side. And up that right-hand side, I will cut around a few of the people up that, that side. So it's creating quite a nice horizontal line that the bottom of the umbrellas. So from a composition point of view, we've got these lots, lots of these strong horizontals and light and dark, light and dark, these, these sort of repeating bands coming down the coming down the painting, the, the light sky, then the dark building, then the parasols, then the then the um, street level, and then we've got the square being light, and then as we're coming towards the the foreground, we've got the darker horizontal, sort of horizontal shape of the the tables and chairs underneath the parasols. And then maybe, well, I'm gonna get in a slither of light in the in the foreground as another as another element there continuing that light dark light dark type of uh, theme sticking with the my number 12 synthetic brush and this furthest uh, most left figure so slightly dark against um, the background and then that person next to it I'll keep the that figure light but create the edge of that figure by painting around it and we're almost now well I'm coming down into the figures in the cafe I'm just pausing now and again just to look at the photograph, trying to get a bit more inspiration about what mark to make next and where to define a tablecloth. So that's my first tablecloth there. Paint around that. That will be the tablecloth. I need to go in a little bit darker with the this side of the table, just where the tablecloth comes down this side over to more more central figures now silhouetted against the the light of the the square coming in from that top left corner 
bring those figures down to define another table. I'll have a group of four people here. That's number two. Pick up a bit of a bit of cadmium orange just to alter the the strength of this this cobalt the cobalt blue just to make it a little bit lighter for that figure. So there's my four back of a chair. Create some horizontal marks down to the next table. And then over to a couple more figures. Cadmium orange. You can see I'm mixing my warmer colours in that bottom mixing well, and then in the middle are mainly my cools, the, the cobalt blue, and then right at the top there, the, the third mixing well. I generally keep that to, to darks. Cadmium oranges gonna gonna serve as my my flesh my main flesh color in this painting I'm leaving out just little tiny sparkles of paper that will be they could they could be just little objects on the tables that are catching some light alter the, the strength of the wash as well, just pick up a bit of water. And a brush, a brush like this is very good at creating very fine lines and then just alter, altering the pressure on the brush as I'm touching the paper just gives little subtle variations in the thickness of that line and nice, a nice brush marks for, great for these, these table legs, right? A, solitary figure there. A lot of these shapes in, in this cafe area, they're quite geometrical squares and rectangles. And that's, that's a good way of thinking about it, is just think of not as these, you know, how, how do I draw in 50, 50 chairs? How do I put in 12 tables? But just think about the shapes of how they're all combining, how they're all combining with each other to create one shape and just creating the impression of, of all of these different tables and chairs together rather than getting rather than getting, making it too difficult by thinking all, of all of these different tables and chairs and their legs, it would be quite, quite a difficult task to do. Now, over on the right-hand side, we've got a couple more figures, just continue on. Continue on this general theme of these geometric shapes. There's Probably the last figure I'll do in the cafe area. Bit of a horizontal up to the edge of some tables over here. And then continue it, continue it over to the extreme right. The table tops on this side, they're not as bright as in the middle, so I'm not leaving any large areas here bright, but just weaken the wash a bit to 
give the sense of some of those tablecloths over that side. Two chairs, this side of that main table. Cadmium orange mainly for those, creating a, almost a sort of brownish shade. Now go a bit cooler, neutral tint, cobalt blue. The, the edge of the tablecloth, it's not straight. There's a little bit of a, a frill on the, on the corners, just where the uh, tablecloth drops down a little bit lower. And over to the right hand side, connect up these two shapes with some light shadow. As I come down to this foreground area, this is where it's really going to hopefully pull, start to pull the painting together and create a bit more impact. As I did with initial wash, my brush going in, in all sorts of different directions, um, just to really assist with the texture of the ground here, add in a bit of water, go a bit weaker, let things mingle and merge together. As, as this area is still damp, I can keep going into it with some darker color to just give some subtle extra darker values. And this is it's probably about a quarter of the size of the overall picture. So I want to make it fairly interesting and not too, not too flat a wash. There's lots of soft shadows underneath the tables and chairs and then some harder lines with the, with the cobblestones and the, the edges of the, the pavement stones. But first of all, before I create those hard lines, just continue covering up this area. Have a bit of fun in paint, <laughs> painting in all sorts of different directions. And connecting, connecting these different shapes so that slice on the right hand side, I'll connect that, drop in some darker paint here, connect these two together, there, there, there could be another table leg or some, some sort of pole or sign or something like that, but um, more table legs or chair legs over there. And then on the, on the left hand side as well, Next, I need to do the left hand side, which is a strong, obviously it's a strong vertical. I need to, first of all, because the right hand side of this column, this pillar here is in the shade, go a little bit darker. I've gone back to my soft brush, just lightly touching the surface introduce a few little variations of value, picked up a bit of neutral tint, keep it fairly warm here, could go a bit cooler towards the bottom and just, there's not too much water on the brush. And I'm getting just a few little sparkles of the stonework showing. And on that right, the extreme right hand edge, perhaps there's a little bit of sun catching that edge, so keep that light. Using the 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 tape on the left hand side, that's that's my sort of vertical guideline, so I can keep that line parallel to to that side.
just while that's drying a little bit, that left hand side, I can now get in some smaller figures, smaller brush, probably a number four, I reckon, this brush, and get in some faces, put in some more distant figures in the middle of the square, lots of different figures, space them out random, randomly. And where I, I was painting along the bottom of the distant umbrellas, but there were little tiny indents and I, I was cutting around different, different uh, shapes. They are my, my figures. So they can be heads, shoulders, of different um, distant figures catching the light. I'm just really now completing that that vision and and just drawing in the rest of those the rest of those shapes. I don't really pay too much attention to legs, just keep them nice and simple. Some of these figures have got some shadows. It's not, it's late spring, maybe early summer, so the shadows are not too uh, short, just a little bit of length to them. This is the this is the near side of those table clocks just to create a bit of darker value there, the shady side of those tables. And this main one. This shade here is, is almost dry now, and I can go in with the this smaller brush and just in a few places emphasize some table legs and darker shadows underneath the, the tables and chairs. Use my finger to just move move the paint along or create a softer edge or lift off a little bit of paint if there's just a little bit too much there. Some of those figures will be a little bit darker in the square as well, alternate their, their size and their, their value and the shape and keep it fairly random, not have them all equally spaced between each other. Another back of a chair there. Just a, a square shape, put in another one here. Legs to those chairs. Connect just a little bit, connect further over to that right hand side. You'll have to excuse this insect flying around, it's attracted by my light.
Now, on the left-hand side, I want to go really dark with the side of the column that's facing, uh, is facing towards us. So quite dark there, neutral tint, quite thick, neutral tint, little bit of, little bit of cadmium orange. Go a bit cooler towards the bottom, pick a bit of neutral tint, not too much water on the brush, really dark. Not a perfect edge with the with the lighter value to the right, but just to create a bit of a, an interest to that left hand side. Now there's a few little lines for the joints between the blocks, just helps with the perspective and maybe just assists in, in leading the eye. Just a few more lines, just just guiding, guiding us into the the composition. Well, I've got this darker colour and the smaller brush, strengthen up some of the architectural details, the the lines between the different levels of the building on the right, maybe a few verticals, the the gaps, the the uh, the arches on the right hand side. With the main umbrella, I need to make this side just a little bit darker. And down the right hand side as well. There we go. Tiny bit underneath the the furthest umbrellas as well. The umbrellas at the back of the square I need to make them a little bit darker, so I'm going to glaze over them with a, a thin wash of that cobalt blue just to push them back a little bit further, put them in the shade. A light a light blue cobalt wash and then maybe a few on that right hand side more details to the background buildings, neutral tint, cobalt blue, small brush, and just those those lines between the the floors, the levels. Emphasize a figure on that left, a bit darker. Could be somebody standing up. On the floor, I just need to create a few lines to give the impression of the cobblestones and the, the pavement 
um, slabs, just a few, just a few lines to give some extra texture in there. If the edge is too hard, just use my finger again, just to move it around, soften up the edge, which I'll need to do that. That's a bit of shadow underneath those two chairs. Because the paper is now quite dry, I just need to keep keep using this this technique just to get that soft edge back again. Sneak in a few more figures where I can just see there's a little bit of a gap there in that middle area. I've got the rest of the umbrella to do some, some basic details in there. I'm using a thin rigger brush now from Lebanon to create some quite fine lines, a bit like those joints on the left hand side there with the perspective, they're just helping us lead, lead us into the composition. Just a few here and there. More of a darker horizontal. So not not every single line, just just a few of them to give that impression of those of the flooring on the square. While I've got this thin brush, I can create a few lines there in the windows just to define those a little bit more. Balconies. Perhaps some just little bits and pieces on the on the ridge of the roof. Main pole for the umbrella. There need to be a few little side supports for that umbrella and I, I need to put on the bit of writing for the umbrella as well. Uh, this this place is called La, is, I think it's La, La Torre del Oro. Um, so T-O-R-R-E del Oro. Is it Oro or Ora, something like that, but just 
create a little bit of writing here for the context of the place. could have actually penciled this in first of all just to make sure it's correctly placed but I'm just uh, doing it freehand. I think it's fairly fairly central on that on that umbrella on that side panel. Not sure if it's aura or aura anyway. And then a few of those spindles to the uh, these uh, supports coming out from the centre of the umbrella. Just a faint one there. So at this stage of the painting, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much there. I'm just really looking for some final touches, just making sure it's all hanging together. And with this small brush, just creating some very final, finer, fine, finer, final details to finish things up. The trick is, of course, knowing when to stop. Some dark arches over that side, maybe have a darker bottom to that figure. And that's it done. This is the M painting, Plaza Mayor in Madrid, lovely square in central in the old part of Madrid and the feeling of light but mainly trying to restrict myself with two colours, a limited palette with a help, with, with a little bit of help from neutral tint uh, to, to achieve the, a bit more of an impact with the darker values but mainly cobalt blue and cadmium orange, a nice cool colour, a nice warm colour and trying to see how they mingle with each other, what kind of different values I can get, colours I can get, textures as well. I like the granulation. The The paints I was using are handmade paints from Jackman's Art Materials in the UK. More information on them in the notes this video, but I, I quite like the, the granulation that appeared here in the, that main shadowy area. But a very loose way um, that I'm, I'm painting, trying to create the impression of this square and the open space and the light coming in. Very loose way of doing the windows, the, the figures, and thinking also taking complex objects like the cafe scene, the cafe area with all those tables and chairs and people, trying to think of them as shapes, the geometric shapes of the backs of chairs, the tops of tables, and then looking at figures, a group of figures, all as one shape and using that, I used a number 12 synthetic brush just to create, you know, there's a group of four figures there, group of two people here, solitary figure over there, but as I come down, just leaving little slithers of light for a bit of sunlight hitting hitting a tabletop. And then with the background, the furthest figures, I, I just quickly put those in with that smaller brush, but also opportunities like little bits of light could be, well, I use a little bit of light there as the top of a bit of sunlight hitting the top of that figure. But there's more 
there's more little sparkles there that could be used again for creating extra figures. I think there's some more on the left hand side if I go over, zoom back out. Yes, over here. So there could be another another figure in there. You know, could be that's the top of the figure and then the actual body of the figure, something like that. You get the idea. So a loose painting, feeling of light, restricting myself to that limited palette. Hope you like the video. Please catch up with me on Patreon. Lots of fun things going on up there in my Patreon club, live streams and exclusive uh, content. But thanks for watching and catch up with you on the next video. Bye bye.